Hey guys, this is Bomb Taker One, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a zombie survival guide at uh, game in Blender. Um, this is quite simple to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so first we're going to want to delete everything but the light. You can leave the light there. The light's never done anything to us. <laughs> then um, press Shift and A, and you'll get this menu. Gonna want a mesh and make a plane. Press S to scale that up. This is gonna be our world. Once again, shift and A. And then we're gonna make a cube. Move that up a little bit. Then go up to this bit here and select Blender Game. Make sure you're on this. Then in this bit here, move over to Physics. Click on Dynamic. That way, when we press P, it'll drop to the actual thing. But you'll notice we can't actually move him. So I'll go into play and I'll press a load of buttons, but nothing happens. That's because we need to make it happen. So go down here and go to the logic editor. Move this up a bit and I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now, select this, and I'm just going to change a load of the properties. Uh, call that player. Press N if you want to change the name. Scroll down to where it says item. I'm going to make this player as well. So now we have that sorted out. There we go. Add a sensor, and make it a keyboard sensor. Add a controller. Could be any well, can be an and or an or controller, I guess. And then make a motion actuator. Right, so I'm gonna make this guy move forward. So I want to do it well, make him move when I press the W key. Just connect these up. And I want to move in this direction. So I'm going to have the Y axis, so I'm just going to put that up. So now I want to press W, he'll move off into the distance. Isn't that fun? <laughs> it's fun! Um, <laughs> now add another keyboard sensor, and I'm going to make him move backwards now, so I'll put that as S, add another controller, add an actuator, motion, and I'm going to make it so he goes in the opposite direction to what I just did. So now I press P, goes forwards and backwards. Just minimize these. And once again, keyboard, motion, and and and. Now, with the left and right, have the key you want, so I'm going to have A, and instead of motion, you need rotation, but if you do the Y axis, it will rotate around the arrow, which we don't want with the Y or the X axis, we need the Z axis. So I'm going to put this up to 3, and I'll press P. And now that I press A, he'll turn to the left. Uh, we want the opposite of what we just did there. So, rotation minus 3 instead of plus 3. So now if we go into the game engine, we can move him wherever we want. But now, because this is a zombie survival game, we're going to need a zombie. So let's go make one. Now, because I'm doing a tutorial, I'm just going to make mine a cube. You can put a lot more time into this than, you, than I can, really. So press Shift A, and I'm going to make a cube, just because... This game is going to be cubes, just trying to kill each other. I'm going to change that to zombie, 
add a property Oop. and make the property zombie simple as that but he won't spawn uh, if we press P but before we make him spawn we need to do a load of things now I'm gonna put an always you can put a near if you like but I don't want to at the moment because it's a little more effort and I'm lazy <laughs> so have the same as before and but instead of a keyboard have an always and the same for controller and actuator just add and motion put it up to 10 but we're going to add another one and this is going to be edit object which is going to also be connected to the controller then we go into this sub menu here and we're going to click track 2 and we're going to select the object that's our player so hopefully when it spawns it should follow our player but notice when we press P he doesn't spawn so we need to make him spawn press shift A and we're not going to go for a mesh this time we're going to go for an empty let's go for an empty and move it somewhere in the game world uh, above the plane and oh um, yeah just forgot you need to make sure that it's a dynamic so it drops onto the same thing nearly forgot that nearly forgot that um all right empty I'll select the empty now um now we're gonna make an always but we don't want tons to spawn at the same time so I'm gonna go for this thing which is activate true level triggering which is like a pulse mode have the frequency somewhere around say 300 ish make an and controller and an edit object actuator now if we drag these or connect these up we now have this Had it have the edit object submenu as add and select our zombie as the object so now you'll see our zombie follows our player around and another one's just spawned so they spawn at specific points that spawned a little quickly so I'm just gonna bump that up a bit but it kind of sucks at the moment because we have no way of fighting back against the impending hordes of zombies that are going to come and try and kill us. So what we need to do is make a bullet. So I'm just going to make a icosphere. Move that away from there. Scale it down and make it the bullet and this you have to I, I'm gonna stress this now you have to add a game property here you don't have to for the zombie and the player but it just keeps everything nice and tidy I like it like that so this has to be a property I'm gonna call it bullet you can call it whatever you want but just remember the name I'm gonna stress that right now you must remember the name right now to have it so it kills our zombie we need to add another sensor and this is going to be a collision sensor and the property this is why we needed to put the property in the property is going to be bullet and we add a controller and another edit object controller make sure you don't get these mixed up I'm going to call this kill just so I know which one it is So now connect these all up and make sure the sub menu is end object. You'll see there's nothing else as soon as you select that. That means it's good, it's good to go. Now what we need to do is create a gun of sorts. You can model or do whatever you want, but I'm just gonna make an empty you need to make the empty, but you can model it so it's at the end of the gun. So I'm going to make an empty and put it right in front of my character. There we go. And with you first select the empty and then shift 
right click on the cube. You'll see they're now both selected. So now what we need to do is press Ctrl and P and that will mean that wherever the cube goes the empty will follow.